So I'm going to go out on a limb in this video and tell you that I think uh, there's a myth going on right now about factual and non-factual blog niches. I personally don't feel like there's any blog niche that's non-factual. So, um, for example, uh, one niche that I've heard described uh, by some people as being non-factual is the niche uh, dreams. So, uh, you know, a blog that would be dealing with dreams would be a non-factual blog. And personally, I'm not too sure about that. So I went into Low Fruits and I just wanted to see, hey, could I write a blog about dreams and not have to do any fact checking or worry about any of the other things that I worry about when I write on um, other niches that obviously do have to be fact checked. So when I put in uh, dreams as the seed keyword, in Low Fruits, which is the happens to be the keyword research tool I use. Now you could be using Ahrefs, SEMrush, other tools. Um, all works somewhat the same when you're looking for these low volume, uh, long tail keywords. And typically, what I'm looking for is uh, topics that deal with questions, right? So here's a few that I had uh, Low Fruits analyze. Are dreams the same as reality? What happens when you laugh in your dreams? What does it mean when you dream about laughing? What happens when you see snakes in your dreams? So here's the deal. Is it non-factual if you write about what happens when you see snakes in dreams? It could be. If you're writing from the first perspective and you just say, hey, I think this is what it means when I see snakes in my dreams. But can you, you know, with any amount of certainty, write about this in a way that uh, allows you to interpret everybody's dreams? I don't think so. Now, whether you can base it in a scientific fact or not, I don't know. But the thing that you need to realize in a topic like this, um, some of this sort of starts to delve into the YMYL area, because there are a lot of very scholarly um, papers written about dreams and dream interpretation, dreams as they relate to psychology, dreams as they relate to anxiety, that kind of thing. So that's why I don't think there's really anything as a non-factual blog niche. I think um, many of these very, uh, well, let's take, you know, just the topic of dreams from a 30,000 foot level, sure, I could probably find 50 articles that I could write and not have to worry about fact checking. But at some point, I'm going to run out of those. And, you know, then, for instance, what happens when you don't have dreams? Um, you know, there are physical uh, issues around this as well. Maybe you don't sleep very well. Maybe you have sleep apnea and you can't dream because you never get in a REM cycle. So that happens to be YMYL. Uh, and that's very fact-based. Uh, another topic that I hear talked about is spirituality as being somewhat non-factual. So if you stay at a very high level and just talk about spirituality in general, if you're doing it from a first-person perspective, again, this is your own opinion about how you feel about spirituality. And if you want to write all your blog posts that way, then you know there is no fact-checking to be done because you're giving your opinion. But a lot of uh, topics and spirituality, as you go through uh, this list that I see in Low Fruits, so for example, what does the Bible say about spiritual food? Um, you know, that's sort of a spirituality topic in the, in the Christian religion. Well, do you have a master of divinity? I don't. Uh, you know, I don't know original Greek and Hebrew. So I'm certainly, you know, from a cursory perspective, I could go in and write about this. But, um, you know, as somebody that doesn't have a master of divinity, uh, I certainly couldn't write it in a perspective that would be uh, completely factual because I just don't have the educational background to do it. And so this is what happens is many of these topics that they talk about as being somewhat non-factual and that you can sort of write out all these pump and dump articles 
and maybe, you know, get enough traffic so you can, um, you know, get some Mediavine or Ezoic, you know, ad revenue, or perhaps there's uh, some affiliated products that you could sell along the way. That's all well and good, but I, I do think that you need to be careful because some of these things do start to delve into um, areas that you really do need to have some kind of educational background in. Let's take something like self-awareness. Self-awareness um, on its own seems like, you know, hey, I could write about this. A self-discovery journey, that's very first person. But then here's something, you know, is, is it a psychological tool? Is self-awareness a psychological tool um, that helps to understand self-awareness? Or a psychology, a tool that helps to understand self-awareness? You can't write about that unless you're a psychologist. If you're a trained psychologist, go for it. Uh, but that wouldn't be something that you could write about. So my point is, yes, could I find enough very high level, sort of these 30,000 foot level articles that I could write about and not have to worry about being factual? I, I guess I could. Just part of me feels like, you know what, if, if I'm not uh, a therapist, if I'm not a psychologist, I shouldn't probably be writing about self-awareness unless I'm writing a blog about my own self-awareness journey, the books that I've read along the way, things that have helped me out. But it's all got to be from this very first person perspective. So that's my take on factual versus non-factual blog topics. I just think non-factual is a myth. I think it starts uh, bleeding over into the edge of needing to have expertise in any of these areas like dreams, spirituality, self-awareness, and some of these other very more or less high-level high topics that people think are non-factual. So I don't know if this has been helpful or not, but this is my perspective. Until next time, take care.